Welcome everybody. This whole idea of Baad Me Aja was something that I think many of us went through. Uh, we always felt that we know what it has to be done. And then the HR folks would come and tell us how to do it better. Somehow this confidence, or of this thing that we, we know what we have to do here. Yeah. Just leave us alone. Kind of allowed us to keep saying this and not realizing that whatever you do by yourself happens only on the first and after that, whatever you have to get done, you have to get done by others. And therefore, unless you know how to get done by others, you will never be able to really get good results. That's what we're going to talk a little bit about today, which is how do you get good performance out of people? And what is knowing people or knowing how their brain works got to do with it? Okay? I want to show you, to start with, a video which I put Trezor's video. And that is because this shows us a little bit about how the brain works much better than what I could explain in words. So, can we... I want you to notice what is going on here. And, and listen to the conversation that you have in your own brains about what's going on on the screen. And then I'll ask you something about it. Most of us think we're pretty observant, but with a bit of mind control, I wanted to see if I could make these people take even the most obvious things for granted. Excuse me. Do you know how to get to Trinity Church from here? Yeah. You see that church down there? Yep, straight through there. And then you keep going down. Yeah, sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Which way? You see where that church is down there? Yeah. You stay on that, which is a bleak Broadway. And then you walk down two or three blocks, and Trinity Church is over by the inside. We're walking in that direction. Okay. Excuse me, you don't know where Trinity Church is, do you? Might be Wall Street and Broadway. Okay. Well, we're, we're down here somewhere, aren't we? Yeah, you see, we need to... Oops, sorry. 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 Uh, yeah. Inside the tiny church, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you keep going that way, then you left all the way, then you go down a couple of blocks. Yeah. And, uh, Thanks very much. That seemed almost too easy, so later on, I see how far I can take it. Excuse me, do you know where uh, Trinity Church is? It's in that direction. Okay. Yeah. Last time I switched with someone who looked a little bit like me, but where's the fun in that? Okay, oh, you. you know who, who best direct you? you? The other side. You see where that lady's standing? Sure. And that's the booth. No, the lady in the gray. The other side? Yeah, the other side of but the booth. But so you don't know where it is? Uh, exactly what street, no, but it's in that direction. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. Do you know where I'm... Trinity Churches from here. Uh, yeah, fine. Come on, come on. I'll take you. Or you want to walk now? Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to catch some other people. Sorry, so, sorry guys. Sorry. 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 <laughs> okay, listen. Saying. Once you go on Broadway, yes. Remember the numbers are going. I could have sworn it was another guy. <laughs> um, on. Once you hit the Broadway, you're going down. Yes. Walk up straight so that, that way. way and just walk straight down. You're going to see it. It's, right, it's really brown. That's brilliant. Thanks for your help. All right, fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Excuse me. Do you know where Trinity Church is? Yeah. Ah, great. What do we do is, um... Where are we on here? Are we sort of there. Right here. Right through, thank you. Go on. We are at Brooklyn Bridge. You want to cross over there? Go down Broadway and you'll be right there. Okay, thank you. Did you notice that? How many of you in the first one or two swaps did not really get the swap? Yeah? Do you think if you were there, this would have happened to you? If you were there and the swap happened, you wouldn't really get it. Do you think that? Can it, can it look possible? Okay. How many of you actually feel this is a sham deal? So these are actors who are just doing acting here. So it is not really an experiment. They're just making an amusing video. Yeah? You think it's a snap? Um, can you allow me to do something with you? Uh, just give me a chair for a minute. Sorry about this, I'll just put you back. Can you please come and sit on this chair for me? Thank you so much. So why did you sit between the two handles and in front of the back? That's the only way you sit on a chair. I'm stupid. Why shouldn't I be asking questions like that? 
But tell me, when you came from there, did you consciously decide and think about where you were going to sit? No, because it is already decided that I should sit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, others, did our brain actually went through conscious decision making, problem solving, figuring out how this is going to change? It did? Very interesting. Thank you so much. If we had asked a one and a half year old child to come and sit on a chair, would he know where to sit? They would. And therefore, how the brain works, how all of us work, is because when we solved a problem for the first time and it gave me a reward, there was a dopamine shock, the brain loved it. And then the brain repeated it, repeated it, repeated it, so that it becomes a pattern. And today, therefore, when you come and sit here, by the way, your brain works on it. Your brain is working on it, everything. It decides which step to take, how to balance your body, how to move forward, everything is up there. But thankfully, it is all in the subconscious part of the brain and don't have to consciously decide on it. Because otherwise, maybe it will be a nightmare. It will be a nightmare. The fact that we are all here is because our brain has these patterns. So how much time did you take to tie your shoelaces this morning? Did you think about it? A three, four year old, thank you so much, a three, four year old boy who is trying to learn how to tie a shoe legs goes crazy. It takes him three, four days. The process goes along and he has to redo it, he has to redo it till we create a pattern. And the pattern is so strong now that I woke up in the morning, I just tied it and I came here. The trouble is that 99% we all think of ourselves as intelligent, analytical, reasoning human beings. But 99.9% of the time, the decisions that we are taking today are all coming from us unconscious. They're coming from the patterns that we've created. And those patterns make us what we are today. If you don't believe me, let's go down the road and let's tell each other, let's cross the road. All of us will be able to look here, there, and run. We won't have to stand there. If we had no patterns, we would have to stand there and calculate. Okay, so that car is coming at 30 kilometers an hour. This one is coming at 60. It'll reach at this time. So by that polynomial equation, there will be a will be a disaster. Right? So tell me, are the patterns good or bad? Both. Both. Because if there were no patterns, I would lie in the bed when I wake up. I don't know what to do with myself. I just lie there. My patterns allow me to pull my leg leg over my eye, get out of bed, go to the bathroom, brush my teeth when I'm asleep. Because it's a pattern which you to do. If I didn't have it, life would be harder. The challenge is that if I only work out the patterns I have, then every time there's a question of getting a different result, then it comes into way. Because when I moved from learning, from doing stuff and insisting that I know how to do it, to this side of the table where we are learning, what I realize that we have to have learning and development in organization because we need to have performance improvement. And if performance improvement has to happen, there has to be a different result. If there's a different result, there has to be a different behavior. And to have a different behavior, you have to have a different mindset. Now this mindset is crazy. Because as an engineer, when you start to study the mindset problem, the mindset appeared like a circular science. Because what is mind? Mind is the software of the brain. It is what we think. And psychology, which is the study of mindset, is all about observing behavior, creating a model, predicting behavior because of that. And once you have behaviors with respect to the models being proven, this becomes valid for you. Now that's a simple science because sometimes this can land you in problem. Just about 400 years ago, everybody believed that the earth is stationary and the sun goes round. Behavior repeated many, many, many times and so well executed that I could predict sun will come behind that heart and by the way sit between those two trees now as the seasons change maybe shift by a meter but it will always happen like that so much so that when Galileo actually said I have seen the hard way it doesn't happen like that poor guy was jailed he died like a blind man nobody listened to him just about 400 years later 400 years later today if I come to your house treat your daughter who is 6-7 years old and I bring her out and say all these guys have been telling you all the truth. Now, actually, it is not the sun which is stationary, it is the earth which is stationary. Look, the sun is going in. And you can't ride a motorbike for more than 20 kilometers an hour with all your hair moving, your shirt, that's right. How can you say the earth is shuttling around by a few thousand kilometers around? Doesn't happen. All this is a lie. It is very likely that the daughter will go inside and say, some crazy uncle has come outside. 
and telling me all lies. And that is because 20 or 400 years, all of us just believe that this is some station and the earth goes up. And we believe that also tells us a little bit about what our beliefs are. Our beliefs are nothing but the habit of thought. We haven't seen it ourselves, have we? Some people have just told us, we just repeat it to ourselves, but then we just believe. And therefore, how do you change beliefs like that? Because everybody in the organization believes, and therefore they have the performance they have. Now, if I have to change that performance, something different has to happen. And it becomes very difficult to change these beliefs. So we started going deeper into it and say, so how does it not happen? What is the hardware say? What about, and this is interesting because if I just, uh, may I do this and open it up and bring that three pound, three gooey substance out here, what is sitting on the chair now? Nothing. Which means that whatever we are, we are in that three pound substance. And that three pound substance is a processor. It has a set of inputs and therefore has a set of outputs. If it is a processor, there must be a user manual, right? So where is the user manual? And the trouble is that till about 15 years ago, there could be a user manual because there was no science to study a brain and the brain is like. So all we had was either study animal's brains and extrapolate that, or study a dead brain's brain. Because you couldn't process a live brain. But with EEG, with fMRI, we become lucky now. And we can actually look at what's happening in the brain as it is happening. Now that allows us to learn more deeply about what is creating our behaviors, what is creating these patterns. And if these patterns have to change, can we really change it? And that's where neuroscience comes in. So neuroscience possibly tells us that while we are a collection of all these patterns, there is hope. And the hope is that as the brain evolved, the first thing which came up was the reptilian brain. And the reptilian brain, the whole purpose of that reptilian brain was to, thank you so much. Let me show you the damn thing. So this was, this is the brain. I put one note there. And this part was the reptilian brain. And the idea of the reptilian brain was just to take care of the processes, your respiratory, your digestive, respiratory, all that. On top of it, what evolved here, is the mammalian brain. And this was your basal ganglia, your hippocampus, and what it provided to us was memory and emotion. And therefore today also, when you remember the first day you ever went to, you get that emotion. Come on, come on, come out of there. Or the first scary thing that you ever saw. And these two get connected. But what emerged on top of it, and this is that whole surface area here, is called the cortical brain or the human brain. And what really does the thinking is the frontal cortex. So if you touch your forehead, your, your fingers are right now pointing at the frontal cortex. What frontal cortex does for human beings is amazing. So let me give you an experience of that. Just close your eyes and imagine you are a camera in the corner of this room. Close your eyes for a camera. With that camera, can you guys see the hall and a lot of people sitting on chairs? Yes or no? Yes. Very good. Can you see a very handsome, smart guy talking to you? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. And now, can you almost see yourself sitting in a chair? Yes. This is amazing. This is uniquely human. And this is happening because you are able to, this is called distributed recognition, you are able to get out of your body and look back at yourself as if you are a third party. Most of the animal species are not able to do this. Now, this allows us to learn. Because with this, we can learn with other people's experience. Our learning goes beyond just our instincts. We can sit in a room and learn, because we can reflect on it. So what the frontal cortex does is five things. Understanding, decision making, recalling, memorizing, and inhibiting. So when I say to you, close your eyes, do this, frontal cortex is working because it's trying to understand what is already saying. And then you are taking a decision saying, let me focus on it, let me do it. Right? Then yes, when you close your eyes, you are actually not seeing the room. Right? You are recalling the room as you last saw it. And in that, now you are trying to memorize so what the hell is happening here. And as you are trying to do all that, there are other actors which are trying to get on the stage. So there is a thought which is saying, this place was actually too far. I hope they don't do the second session again. Or 
I just say, uh, my son was not well. I don't know if uh, he should go to a doctor today. Or it is saying that better had to give me the court. I hope the court has reached the office. Now, when all that is happening, you are still saying, hey, wait a minute, those thoughts should not come right now. And therefore, you are inhibiting those thoughts. That's also federal politics. Now, all this is a lot of job. And therefore, this piece has to be very, very effective. The trouble in this piece is it's evolving, it's new, and therefore it consumes a lot of energy. 70% of the water that you drink goes to the function of the brain. Out of that, 70% goes to the function of the frontal cortex. Very inefficient. And that is why, if you see, it has a large surface area. If you open it up, this is like a big piece of about 12 inches. You fold it up and you make it safe, so that surface area is large. But because it is inefficient, the trouble is that your body or your brain always tries to keep you safe. And therefore, it is trying to spend less and less energy. To prove that, if you are on this floor, when you go down, when the pole gets over, would you run to your car or would you walk to your car? You will walk. And therefore, we are trying to keep the least amount of energy consumption because the brain is worried that you don't know when you need another burst of energy. And therefore, if you can walk, you don't run. If you can stand, you don't walk. If you can sit, you don't stand. If you can lie down, you don't sit anymore. And therefore, if your brain has to create a new pattern, it says, no, 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 no. Use one pattern you have. There, there should be a pattern for this, just work with that. And therefore, every time you have a new problem, your first response is, what is your pattern? Difficult. Which is the trouble in our pathways. You need the performance to go up. You need a different result. You need a different behavior. People are saying, hey, yes, you have to. Why do That is because I don't want this thing to create a new pattern. That's a lot of effort. Fortunately, if you decide, if the desire, if the want becomes high, the brain is very capable to do that. And therefore what happens in the brain is this frontal cortex actually can create a movement. It can create something new. And that is, whenever your brain becomes conscious of a trigger, a response is being generated, and your memory is giving something to you, before your motor cortex gets activated and you take an action, there's a little movement. It's a time gap. There's actually literally a time gap. And the time gap, your conscious brain can break that movement, freeze it, make it larger, and make you have a new choice. If you take a new choice in that movement, you can actually change the consequence. So your driver of your actions is the large unconscious brain. It's like a huge ship. But fortunately, the frontal cortex is the lever which is deciding direction. And if the lever gets active, you can change the direction. Let me give you an example. New Year, you give a resolution, I will be losing weight. And therefore, uh, you put an alarm, but somehow every morning when the five, six o'clock alarm goes off, your hand goes and you just... Many times the clock actually fell, I mean, it is 10 or uh, 10, 10 or 12 clocks break. When you wake up actually at 7.28, you are saying, Kya you have control the Actually, it is not like that, just go back to that memory. When you are actually taking your hand away, you realize what you are doing. And all we are saying is, when you realize what you are doing, is just hold on for a second, we'll catch that moment and say, once again I have decided that I am shutting the alarm and I will not go out again. And therefore I am responsible for the state that I will continue to be in. You have held that moment, you have expanded it, you have created a choice there. And now you take responsibility for the consequences. <coughs> What we do is help people see that when they are learning something, the control is in their hands and they can alter their future. Because for most of us, what we're learning is that the advent of neuroscience is a little bit like the Newton's law changing the face of the world. Before the Newton's law, there were ideas and beliefs about how the world works. And then there were rules and principles. And suddenly, Industrial revolution happened, scientific revolution happened, the pace of change in the last 400 years for human civilization is so different. That's what neuroscience is doing to the leadership. Before neuroscience, there were ideas and beliefs about how human beings work. Now we have theorems and postulates. If we understand them, if we know our brain, we can change them. Thank you so much.